Hello and welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today I'm going to show you how to draw Herman Munster with black and white charcoal on black art paper. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's drawing. You're going to need some black art paper. I'm using the brand Arteza. This is 90 pound 9 by 12 inch black art paper. And I've got some charcoal pencils here. I've got different kinds. I've got white charcoal. I have an HB, a 2B, a 4B, and a 6B. I also have some chalk pencils. I've got some blenders, just some cotton swabs here. And I have these blending stumps and tortillon blenders. That's mostly going to be for the white charcoal because that doesn't blend as easily. I have a piece of wax paper to put my hand down so I don't smudge everything around me. And I wanted to show you this. This is called graphite transfer paper. This is white and I drew out my stencil and I'll leave a link of, this, of the uh, PDF stencil in the description so that you can download it, print it and use it. And if you want to transfer your stencil onto your canvas, you can use either this gra graphite paper transfer paper, which is really great. Or I have a video on how to transfer your stencil onto your canvas and I'll link that below and in the card above. So it is spooky season. <laughs> Today we're going to draw Herman Munster from the Munsters. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to start with, let's see, I usually start with the lightest values. So the lightest values just means basically the whitest values. So I have a reference photo and it's a pretty popular one that you can find on the internet. Uh, it's not my property so I can't really show it but I'm going to basically color in the areas that are the whitest first and that's right here his part of his eyeball and I've got white charcoal here. There's a little twinkle in his eye and on this side too he's got a little spot of white down here and a twinkle in his eye as well. He's looking that way so I'm trying to make it look like he's looking that way. Okay and his eyelids are pretty white as well. I'm just outlining the area that I'm going to be coloring in with the white charcoal pencil. And this is how I do it. I basically, if I have a color photo, I desaturate it so it's black and white. And I look at the values. You know, what is the lightest white? What is a medium white? What is a gray, a dark gray? What is completely 100% black and that's how I figure things out. This eyelid too, there's an area that's very white. I'm just outlining it and I'm going to color that in with the white charcoal right away. And I'm turning my pencils once in a while so that I don't wear them down on one side. You might hear some pet noises in the background. This is a pet house and I have dogs and cats. Right now one of my dogs is snoring, so usually it gets pretty loud. <laughs> okay, there are some other areas that are whiter and I'm going to wait to do those for now. But that's good because I always like to kind of get the white detail of the eyes first. Now I've got these, this brand is Real Slate, they're ch chalk pencils and this is what I use for um, a darker value of white. I'm probably only going to use three or four values here, maybe five, I'm not sure. And what I mean by values, I'm, I want to explain that. This is a 100% white, that's a value. Um, it's just the shades basically of white and black and gray. So if I say value, that's what I mean. Now I'm going to color in his entire face with this white chalk pencil. I really like this chalk pencil, 
but it's one of those things that you have to sharpen a lot, which can get a little bit annoying. What I'm doing is there's this area here where he has a scar and I want to not forget to put the scar in so I'm not going to apply that chalk there just yet. And when I apply any kind of pencil I usually do a circular motion because I don't want straight lines to show. They will show when you're blending especially with this chalk pencil and with the uh, charcoal. Okay. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to take my white charcoal pencil again. I have several. Some of them are sharp, some of them are a little duller. And for the larger areas, I'm using the dull one. Because he's got around his forehead here. It's very bright. Okay, and a little bit here too. All right. Now I'm going to continue to apply that white chalk. And the picture that I found online, he's kind of fading into dark here, so I'm going to leave all this side pretty dark. He's got a little bit of white here in his hair, but it's not pure white. It's kind of a faded white. A little bit around his eyes here. See, I'm at the point where this is not I'm not getting any chalk out of it anymore, so I, I have to take another one unless I stop and sharpen them. Just on his nose here, there's a little bit. I'm going to take my white charcoal again because he's got a spot on his nose. Let's see. This whole area, the bridge of his nose, is lighter. And a little spot under here. If you're following along, You can always stop, pause, you know, apply color, start again. That's one way of following along. I'm using the chalk pencil now. chalk on his ear, right here. His ear is a little bit in the shadow. And under this eye I've already done. I'm going to stop here for now and I'm going to start blending because I want to see what's happening here. So I'm going to use my cotton swab and blend the chalk. Cotton swabs blend chalk very, very well. And you have to turn the cotton swab too once in a while because if it gets filled with medium, it stops blending and it could actually damage your paper. And when I blend, I'm blending in circles. Okay. 
I'm just starting with the chalk, blending all the chalk, and then I'll blend the white charcoal because it doesn't blend well with these cotton swabs. I hope that my lighting is good. Actually, I'm going to pause right now to make sure that the lighting is okay. I think that's a little better for the lighting. It's really hard to get the lighting right when you're doing um, this kind of drawing with black paper. And it's a dark drawing to begin with. You know, it's Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> Pretty dark. Now, let's see. If I start to blend... I can start by blending this white charcoal with the cotton swab, but eventually I'm going to want to have it a little more blended, so I will use the blending stump or a tortillon blender. But for now I'll just blend it this way. But I'm not going to touch the eyes just yet. Okay, this is giving me a better idea of what values are, uh, where the values are in my drawing. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of his face with this chalk. There's an area here that's very dark, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to probably use an HB for that, HB black pencil. this pencil now. So there we go. I just turned it around and I was able to get more chalk out of it. It's really hard for me to see with the lights when I'm doing white charcoal on, on black paper, especially the chalk, it, it, there's a glare for me, so it's hard for me to see. That's why I stop a lot, because I kind of have to look at my camera to make sure that I'm <laughs> doing it the way I want. But I want you guys to be able to see everything okay. See this, I actually, this should not be that color. That should be black. So what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to take my 4B and I'm just going to fix my mistake there. Charcoal is very forgiving in that way. There, okay. This area is supposed to be chalk. tip or the cotton swab if we don't want to use brand names. Remember that show, The Monsters? That was a favorite when I was a kid. I always loved this guy, Herman Munster. He was not a scary monster at all. <laughs> he was just a nice dad. Okay, so I think I've got everything blended here. I think I did the ear here. Right, so I'm going to take my white charcoal and I'm going to apply a little bit of white here and there just to blend in, just a little bit here and there. All right, 
because there are some areas on his face that are much lighter than what the chalk can do. And I'm trying to uh, take a look at those areas. This area under his lip is very white though, so I'm going to actually draw a line under there that's very white. All right. His chin here. Okay, I'm going to use another cotton swab to blend those areas in for now. Because these areas here, I don't want them as white as this. They're different values. starting to come together a little bit. Now, let's see, what can I do? Oh, I didn't blend up here, that's true. I didn't do that part. And you know, we can do layers. If we're not happy with the brightness, we can always add more. For example, here, I would probably add more of that white charcoal to this area of his forehead. That's where his hair is going to be coming down, so I want to add a highlight where the dark hair will be coming down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start HB. HB is the lightest black charcoal that I have. HB stands for hard black. It's a hard one, so you don't want to press too too hard on it because it might be hard to blend after that. I said hard four times <laughs> just now. All right, so I'm going to look. There are some areas that are a lighter value of black or gray. I'm going to watch those areas here. Now, is the time when the wax paper will come in handy. Just around, remember I said there's a sparkle in his eye? Just around there, there's kind of a light grayish value. Okay, same thing on this eye here. And he's got some gray around here. I'm just looking at my reference photo here. Anywhere that I put black, I always try to have a little bit of white around it to highlight it, even if it's a light layer. Here's the HB again. All right, I've got my white charcoal. I'm just gonna go around that eyeball just a little bit. We're okay here. There's a little bit of white under that eye. I'm going back to my HB now. And I'm coloring in 
just the top area here of his forehead. And I'm going to take my chalk pencil again and I'm going to try to add another layer of chalk to this area of his forehead here. I've got my white charcoal and I'm going to add a very, very light layer of white charcoal on top of that. And just underneath where I put the HB as well. I'll take my Q-tip or cotton swab and try to blend all of that chalk back in and this little bit of white charcoal here that I put on. Okay. I'm actually going to start blending in the HB as well. a little bit here around his eye and his nose. I did a little bit around the side of his mouth here. And let's see. Some of that white charcoal that I put in here. giving it a soft blend, but again, I'm gonna to have to go in with the blending stump, which I'm going to do right now. This is my blending stump, okay? It blends white charcoal very, very well. But before I use the blending stump, I'm gonna use this. This is a little Tortillon blender, okay? I'm gonna go in and just do the eyeballs. I have two sets of blending tools one for white charcoal and one for black charcoal. I like to keep them separate. And I use the Tortillon blenders for the small areas that I want to blend in. Okay, now I'm going to take the large blending stump and I'm going to start blending in the larger areas where I put white charcoal because really the cotton swab doesn't do a good job. That's blended in well. I'm not pressing down too hard, by the way. See, the idea is I don't want, if I take a look, I'm looking through my camera lens right now, there's a big stark piece of white there that I don't want. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab a paper towel because once in a while you have to wipe off your blending stump as well, or it doesn't blend very well. So what I'm trying to do is blend that white area into the rest of the face so that it's not like this big white stark area. You see what I mean? We want it to be well blended. I wonder if that shows well. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, we're nowhere near finished, so let's continue with the blending stump here.
I'm just wiping it off once in a while. It's really, um, there we go. It really needs to be wiped off so that it'll blend well. I think he's starting to come together now. And we've hardly even put any black on. And I'll be honest with you, I've noticed with the white charcoal, sometimes you do have to press quite hard with the blending stump. The problem with that is when you press really hard, it's not easy to put a second layer on. So you have to really be sure that, you know, you're okay with what you've put down on your canvas before you press really hard to blend. Because with the white charcoal, um, like I said, it doesn't blend very well. And you'll see your, your, um, your pencil marks in it. And sometimes that's not, that's not really what I want to see. Okay. I'm liking the way he's looking right now. pretty happy with how he's looking right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my darkest black, which is a 6B, and I'm going to start filling in. And I know my, my paper is black, but I want it a bit darker for his hair. So I'm going to start on the left side because I'm going left to right. I'm right-handed and I'm going to fill in some really dark areas here where his hair is. And there was a spot here that I kept, I used white chalk. It sort of has there kind of a few lines in there because it looks almost zigzaggy. And I'm turning my pencil once in a while so I don't wear down my chalk, uh, my charcoal. Now, charcoal, this charcoal pencil, the 6B, is very soft. So it will likely wear down before I finish coloring in all the areas that I want to. So I may have to stop and sharpen this. And these are not easy to sharpen. They break very easily because they're so soft. These are the pencils I go through the most, the 6Bs. Just because upon sharpening, <laughs> they break. Okay, now he, he has his scar here. It's a bit thick. It's got little stitches in it. All right. Now above his eyes, it's very, very dark black, very dark here. All right. And just above here, it's very dark as well. And I guess he wore very black eyeliner. <laughs> now I'm looking at my reference photo to see the darkest values here. His nostril is very, very dark here. And he's got a shadow here on the other side of his nose. We've got the 
hair going down here. Wonderful. I'm just erasing my stencil line here. While I'm here, I'm just going to take my 2B. And for those who don't know, B means black. And the, the higher the number, the softer the pencil and the darker the charcoal. So a 6B would be much darker than a 2B if you're going for values. There's an area here on the side of his face that's dark, but not as dark as the 6B. So I'm filling that in with a 2B. Okay. And this area too, right here. I'm putting a little 2B in there. Actually under here too. And he's got a little bit of dark here. Okay. Got the 6B again. And I'm just going to erase this whole thing here that I had made the mistake. And I'm erasing my stencil lines at the same time. Same thing here. I'm going to erase those stencil lines. This is all really black over here. That's his, uh, his suit. <laughs> he had a black suit, I think. And it's all black on this side too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit all here and I'm going to blend all that so it doesn't look like a big square. And I haven't touched his mouth yet or his chin so we got to get to that too. So let me see about, I've done his nose. He does have a little black here. This is good. Now his lips they are very dark. Except for a little spot in the middle that I'm going to leave. Probably for the chalk. Or maybe, let's see, my white charcoal. For now. For now. Because it's a little darker than that. But for now I'll leave that. I've got the 6B again, and there's just a little spot here that's very dark. I'm going to take my 2B and fill in this area down here, and at the same time I'm erasing my stencil lines. And under his chin here, 2B. Now his little, I don't know what this is called, his spark plug or something. <laughs> I'm going to take the HB because there are some areas. Actually, I want to start with, I'm going to outline it first so I can see it better. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of HB to the bottom. And he's got like almost a disc here. And I'm going to highlight that and blend it in after. And I still have my HB. And I've got the white charcoal. There's a little bit of a shine here and a little bit of a shine here. And the rest will be 2B. Okay. Now, let's take a quick look here. I've got my HB, and I'm going to fill that area in between his lips there with the HB. And I think I've got pretty much everything filled. I'm just going over with my 6B, and I'm going to put 6B all around his head and around his ears. because I want it to sort of fade while I'm while I'm blending. So I'm going to start blending. And I will start with let's see. Uh, may as well start with the 6B. 
being very gentle here with my cotton swab. I'm blending in large circles here. Anywhere where there's straight lines, I'm just blending in a straight line. I'm going to wait to do the scar. I'm going to take maybe a tortillon blender or a blending stick stump for that because I don't want to lose the shape of it. I'll probably come in with a blending stump for this side too. I'm just doing the initial blending with a cotton swab. Okay, I'm just going to turn my cotton swab and I'm going in anywhere that I feel needs blending. Anywhere that I applied all charcoal. It doesn't have to be just the black because I did apply a little bit more white. I think charcoal is my favorite medium. I love how it blends. I love how it looks. I'm very much into black and white drawings or monochrome, is that what they're called? Monochromistic? I think I made that word up. <laughs> I think he's looking pretty good. All right. Now I have another container here where I have all this stuff for my black charcoal. So I've got my black blending stump here. Try to find some space here. I'm going to do that scar. That's all. That's all I'm doing. Excuse me. All right. Now let's see. I'm just going to take the blending stump and just do some circular blending here just to make sure it's all nice and blended. And this is a little, this little spark plug thingy. I'm not too crazy about how it's looking. I've got my, no, I want my 2B. It just looks a little, the outline is too much right now. I want it to show, but I don't want it to be so obvious, so I'm just going to work on that just a little bit, and I'm going to blend it. Not sure about that. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the blending stump for the rest of the areas. I may add some more black. All right. Okay, it's looking good. I have here, I, I got a whole bunch of dollar store paint brushes. This is just a flat brush, but it works really well to blend the dark charcoals, just to soften things up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to just soften up a little bit on his forehead and around 
his eyes. Okay, I'm going to step back from this for a moment or two to see if there's anything else I want to do. There is something I do want to do, and I'm going to take my 2B, and I'm just going to add a little bit to the tops of his eyes, to his eyelids, because I find that they're just a little too white, maybe just a little too much of the shape that shows. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just looks like two big blobs of white there. Maybe a little around his nose, too. And like I said, I have to kind of get up and look through my camera lens once in a while, okay. All right, I'm gonna take a cotton swab and just blend that in a little. Okay, I'm happier with that. Just doing some last minute blending here. soften things up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my darkest, the 6B, and I'm just going to go in and put a little darker. I'm not going to blend this in because that's part of his hair. I just want it to be a little bit darker and maybe that scar too. And I'm not going to blend that part in. Okay, I think that's looking okay. be and soften up that white under his lip just a little bit. Take my cotton swab and blend that a little bit. I mm, think it needs a little more white after all. Just a thin little layer. And where's my dark 6B. I erased some of his lip before, so I have to put that back in. step back from that and see if I'm happy with it. Well, I think I'm happy with this. Yeah, I think that looks like Herman Munster. <laughs> I'm quite happy with this. I hope that if you followed along, you're happy with what you did too. This is a great time of year. I love the spooky season. <laughs> 
I actually decided to do this drawing because on my blog rainfrancis.com or rainfrancisart.com, both of them work, I have a weekly art date. It's actually an art and dinner date, so I have many, many beautiful people who post links to their blog posts uh, for their art and for their food pictures and food ideas and recipes. It's a lot of fun. So it's every Thursday, Rain's Art and Dinner Date. I do have a theme for the art date, but it's optional. And throughout the month of October, I always have some fun, spooky, Halloween-y themes. And the theme for this week is Haunted House. So I decided to draw Herman Munster because the Munsters do live in a haunted house. I thought that would be fun to do. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, my friends, and I hope that you enjoyed the lesson if you followed along. Please let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any questions. I love to read your comments and I love to reply to them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I post on this channel. I'll see you next time on Rain Francis Art. Bye!